I used to love to drive. I used to love to blow a few lines of cocaine up my nose and drive my dad's Mitsubishi Galant until I smashed it into that uh, front, into the car with some, some grandmother. But she lived. She lived enough. So grandmother with the kids, I got her head on. I made a left turn from the right lane and ruined her day. Smacked my secretary's head on the dash. She lived. She's a big woman. But I used to love to drive the freedom, the freedom of driving with nowhere to go. Just driving through the wasteland of the culture, just driving through the pandemic, seeing the boarded up storefronts, seeing the people looking at you from their houses, wondering if you've come to take what they have and make it yours. Looking at the suspicious people and the scared children and the pets that don't quite understand what's going on. Looking at the shuttered bars and performance spaces, seeing the comedy store with the very fucking spooky sign that doesn't have any names on the market. It just says stay healthy, something you'd find in an apocalyptic film in a deserted town when you were trying to figure out what the hell happened. We're living in a movie, folks. We're living in a movie, and you're in the movie. You're in the movie. I don't know for how long. I don't know how long I'll be in the movie. That's the fun about the movie. We don't know when and if this ends. We're all filled with uncertainty, and we're concocting stories and ideas in our head to try to make it okay, we have to. We're pattern-seeking creatures. We want justice. Enter the QAnon people. We want explanations for why this is happening. We haven't fully, truly given ourselves to the randomness and cruelty of whatever this existence is. Maybe it is a simulation. Maybe it's not. Maybe we're just fungus on a rock and not, nothing means anything. And we're just here and, and, you know, the few moments you get listening to my show or, you know, having kids or whatever makes you happy, you know, those few moments make it all worthwhile because that's truly what it is. You've got to resign yourself to that now. You have to prepare yourself to die, folks. I mean, that's really what it is. You have to prepare yourself for the end because nobody is guaranteed tomorrow, okay? And you've got to think about how you want to live the rest of your days. You have to prepare now. Prepare for the end. And the way that you're going to prepare for the end is move back in with your religious parents and start fucking Cliff, the town bad boy. Become friends with your arch nemesis from high school. She's a fat whore and she's got stretch marks on her neck. And you become friends with her and you eat at Denny's with her late at night and you start smoking cigarettes and doing coke and you hang out in a local bar with a fat bartender named Erica and you let your boss at the construction company pump you and cheat on his wife as he shoves his half-hard penis into your vagina and you don't even wash it anymore because what does it matter? It all becomes one smell. You're your vag and the dirty Denny's floor. It all becomes one smell and it's not a bad smell and it's not a good smell. It just smells warm and rotten. But when you smell it, you realize what that smell is. It's home. It's home. And we're all going home one way or another.